Hi everyone, um, I'm Japu. I just finished my freshman year of college and I took AP Calculus my senior year of high school. So today's worksheet is going to be about L'Hopital's rule, when to use it, and how to use it. Um, if you would like a copy of this worksheet, uh, it is linked in the description below as well as the answer key, as always. And we're just going to get right into it. So first, we're just going to talk about L'Hopital's rule in general. It is the easiest, most common way to solve difficult limit problems. Basically, we're turning a hard limit problem into a derivative problem. Most limits at the high school level, especially on AP tests, um, are fractions. Um, and you can usually use L'Hopital's rule to solve them. So first, it's really important to plug in whatever number the limit is going into, um, whatever number the limit is going to, into your um, fraction that you are given. So since x is going to a in this case, we would plug in a to any x's that we would have in our fraction. If we plugged in a and we got either um, infinity over infinity or zero over zero, we would have to do L'Hopital's rule. Sometimes you get a normal number and that's good because you actually have the answer and you don't have to do L'Hopital's rule. Um, and we will have some examples of that later on in the worksheet. But if you do get infinity over infinity or zero over zero, those are called indeterminates and you must use L'Hopital's rule to get the correct answer. So to use L'Hopital's rule, I usually like to write that I'm using L'Hopital's rule. Um, just indicate that to the AP graders. So especially on the AP test um, itself, if you write L'Hopital's rule or L apostrophe H, um, it indicates to the grader that you know that you're using L'Hopital's rule and they can give you points for that. So to use L'Hopital's rule, what you basically do is you take the derivative of the top of your limit and you take the derivative of the bottom of your limit. And then you plug in A to the derivatives that you've just taken to get your answer. Um, be careful not to confuse L'Hopital's rule with the quotient rule for derivatives. L'Hopital's rule is for limits. You do not ever use quotient rule for limits. Quotient rule is only for derivatives. L'Hopital's rule is for limits. All right, so that's basically the formula that you're going to be using. So for this first problem, we first have to plug in 3 to all of the x's that we see um, in our limit. So that would be 3 squared minus 2 um, times 3 minus 3, which would be 9 minus 6 minus 3, which is 0. So we have 0 on the top. And 3 minus 3 gives us 0 on the bottom. Since we get an indeterminate, we have to use L'Hopital's rule. Um, I sometimes call it La Hospital, just so I can remember how it's spelled, and also that's what it looks like. Um, but I'm just going to write out the problem that we're going to be taking the limit of, our, and so I can kind of keep track of what I'm doing. And then I'm going to take the derivative of the top of the fraction, and the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to take the derivative of x squared minus 2 minus 3, which gives me 2x minus 2. Then I'm going to take the derivative of x minus 3, which gives me 1. Then I'm going to plug in 3 to any x's that I see. So I'm going to get 2 times 3 minus 2 my over 1, which gives me 4. Um, and that's our answer for this problem. Now we're just going to do the same thing for the next problem. We are going to plug in 0 for any h's that we see. So we're going to get 0 plus 3. Um, 0 plus 3 to the 4 is 81. Minus 81 is 0 for the top. And then we just get have 0 for the bottom since h equals 0, which means since we have an indeterminate, we have to use L'Hopital's rule. I, again, indicated that I am using L'Hopital's rule with an L apostrophe H. 
and I'm just writing out the problem really fast. And we're going to take the derivative of the top now. So using the power rule, we can do, we will, we will get four times h plus three to the three over one. And then we plug in zero to the h's that we get from that, in that derivative. And we get 108 as our answer. So for these two problems, you can also use the method that we um, describe in our limits as definition of the derivative video. I like to use L'Hopital for all of these problems just because it's a standard way of approaching these problems because some of these problems you cannot use uh, limits as definition of the derivative. But if you are interested in that method, I really recommend going to check out our video on that. But for now, we'll keep going. So number four, you cannot use um, limits as a definition of the derivative here. And you have to do L'Hopital. And that's why I always use L'Hopital, because it just applies to everything. So plugging in 0, we get 4e to the 0 minus sine 0 minus 4 over um, 0 squared plus 4, to the, 4 times 0. So just a quick reminder. Anything to the zero power equals one, and sine of zero is equal to zero, and cosine of zero is equal to one. So, as our answer, we get zero over zero, since four e to the zero is four, sine of zero is zero, minus four would give us zero, and then zero squared is zero, plus four times zero is zero, so we get zero over zero. So you guys might notice for this limit, um, we have a addition sign next to the zero. So we have x going to zero with the little addition sign in the corner. That addition sign just means that the limit is coming from the right side versus both sides. It doesn't really matter for any of the problems on these on this specific worksheet. Um, we just take we just do L'Hopital's rule um, as we would usually do if there wasn't a plus sign. But if we had absolute, um, absolute values in the problem, then it would change. But for now, we can just ignore it. Just keep, in the back, just keep it in the back of your mind um, that if you do see absolute values, you do have to take a few additional steps to make sure you get the correct answer. But for now, we're just going to do L'Hopital's rule as usual. So we're going to just have the original problem and then we're going to take the derivative of the top and then take the derivative of the bottom. So we're going to get um, 4e to the x, that remains the same. And then we're going to take the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. And then since 4 is a constant and the derivative of any constant is 0, we're just going to um, drop the 4. And then we're going to do the power rule for the bottom, giving us 2x plus 4. If we plug in 0 for every x that we see in this new limit that we've just created, we get 4e to the 0 minus cosine 0 over 2 times 0 plus 4. So 4e to the 0 is 1, or 4e to the 0 is 4 minus cosine 0 is 1, and then 2 to the 0 is 0, and so we just have a 4 at the bottom, and that gives us 3 over 4 as our answer. Now, moving on to the next problem, we're going to again plug in 0 for any x that we see, which will give us e to the 3 times 0 minus 1 minus 3 times 0 over 0 squared. e to the 3 times 0 is 1. And then minus 1 gives us 0, and then 3 times 0 is 0. 0 squared is also 0, so we have an indeterminate, which means that we must use L'Hopital's rule in this case. So we're going to, I'm going to write out the original problem, original limit that we're given, and then I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So for the top, we're going to have 3e to the 3x. And that's because we must use the chain rule in this case. Um, the front 3 from the 3e to the 3x is because of the chain rule. And 
So just remember that. Um, that's kind of a mistake that you can make, um, a little mistake that you can make that will give you the wrong answer in the long run. Um, so be careful of that. And then if we plug in zero for every X that we see, we're gonna get three E to the three times zero minus three over two times zero. And so you'll notice that this will actually give us zero over zero again. We have another indeterminate and that's okay. Um, all you have to do is if you get an indeterminate the first time you use L'Hopital's rule, just do L'Hopital's rule again um, and do it on the new limit that you just found by taking the derivative of both the top and the bottom of the original derivative. All right, so I'm gonna write the new derivative that we, or the new limit, excuse me, that we just found you taking the derivatives of the original limit. And we're going to have um, 9e to the 3x at the top. That's another chain rule, so be careful of that, over 2. And then we're going to plug in 0 for every x that we see, which gives us 9e to the 3 times 0 over 2, which will give us an answer of 9 over 2. All right. So number six, we see that we have inf x going to infinity. Just treat infinity as you would um, a regular number, but you'll see that we get infinity over infinity, and that's another indeterminate. So that means that we do have to use L'Hopital's rule. All right, so what we're gonna do first is just write down the original problem and then we're going to take the derivative. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. That's just a simple power rule. And the derivative of e x squared is e, x, e to the x squared times 2x. Um, and that's because of the chain rule. And then we're going to take the limit or take the, right, we're going to um, find the limit of that specific equation. And I've actually gone ahead and simplified um, the equation, the limit that we just found taking the derivatives. As you can see, you can actually um, cancel out one X from the top and one X from the bottom. So, it's easier to take the second, I'm. Um, this is a spoiler alert, by the way, we do have to do L'Hopital's rule again for this problem. And it's easier to take the second um, L'Hopital of, well, it's easier to do the second L'Hopital's rule of this new derivative of, of this new limit if you simplify the expression. So I really recommend simplifying the expression um, if it's easy to do so um, anyway. And then if you do have to do L'Hopital's rule again, um, you should definitely try and simplify as much as you can because it will just make taking that derivative much easier. So for example, instead of having to do the product rule for the bottom part um, of the new expression, we just have to do another chain rule instead of a chain rule and a product rule, which would be a little more complicated. All right, so let's see. We're going to have 3x at the top. This is just the simplified version of the um, expression that we just found by taking the derivative. So I'm not taking any derivatives here, I'm just simplifying. So our simplified expression would be 3x over 2e to the x squared. And that's from taking our first L'Hopital and as you can see, we get infinity over infinity again after we plug in infinity to all of the x's. So we are going to have to do L'Hopital's rule again. So I'm going to write our new limit that we're taking L'Hopital's rule of. Make sure um, that you um, 
keep in mind that you do have to use chain rule for the bottom part of this expression. But for the top, we're going to have three um, as the derivative. And for the, or sorry, for the top part, we're gonna have three as the derivative. Um, the derivative of three X is three. And for the bottom, we're going to have to do the chain rule to find the derivative. And we're gonna get two E to the X squared times two X. And so plugging in infinity for all the x's, we're actually going to get 3 over infinity, um, and that equals roughly 0. It's a very small number, since if you think about fractions, infinity is such a large number um, compared, or represents such a large value compared to the 3, that it's basically equal to 0. At least that's how I think of it. Some people also call this um, expression bottom heavy, meaning that all of the x's in the expression are on the bottom. Are yes, all, um, all or the highest value of x's or variables are on the bottom. So that rule just means that it's equal to zero. We do have a video on top heavy, bottom heavy, same heavy um, methods of taking derivatives or finding the answer to derivatives, if you would like to check that out as well. That video that um, finds the answer or computes the limit based on the heaviness of that limit is called Limits Involving Infinity, um, and that could be useful. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, all right, we're gonna move on to number seven. So, we basically just need to plug in zero as usual, or plug in seven, excuse me, this time because the limit is going to seven. And we will get zero over zero since ln of seven minus ln of seven is zero and seven minus seven is also zero. So now we're just gonna take the derivative of the top and then take the derivative of the bottom. Lots of people um, see ln of seven and immediately think that the derivative should be one over seven, since the rule for taking derivatives of ln is, if you have ln of x, the derivative would be one over x, but ln of seven is a constant, it's just a number, so the derivative will be zero. So for the top of our expression, um, the derivative will be just one over x, and for the bottom of our expression, we'll just get one. And as we plug in seven, we see that we get one over seven as our answer. So now we're gonna go to the second page or the back of the page, depending on however you printed out the worksheet. Um, number eight, we um, first plug in zero for all the x's that we see. Um, arc sine of x is our arc sine of zero is just equal to zero since um, it's basically just the inverse of sine and sine of zero is zero. And then x just is equal to zero. So we're going to get zero over, over zero, um, meaning that we have an indeterminate and we have to use L'Hopital's rule. So again, I'm gonna write down that I'm using L'Hopital's rule. Um, and here the limit is going to zero. Um, as I said earlier, so I'm just gonna write down the problem again. Hopefully it doesn't cut off too much and we can see what I'm writing. Um, all right, so the derivative of arc sine of x is one over square root one minus x squared. And the derivative of x is just one. So basically we're gonna get a new limit of one over square root one minus x squared. That's just simplifying um, the two derivatives. All right. 
And so if we plug in zero, we're gonna get one over square root of one, which is just equal to one. And that's our answer for number eight. All right, number nine. So we're gonna plug in one and we're gonna get cosine of pi over ln of one. So cosine of pi is actually negative one and ln of x is zero, but um, as I said before, negative one or any number over, or I didn't say this before, I, we were talking about infinity before, but um, negative one over zero or any number over zero is infinity or negative infinity. And that's actually um, our answer. We do not have to use L'Hopital's rule here. So a lot of problems um, with limits in them, you usually do have to use L'Hopital's rule, but sometimes teachers will try to trick you. And if you did use L'Hopital's rule in this problem, you would get the problem wrong. So it's really important to plug in whatever the limit is going into, or going to into the original limit to make sure that you absolutely have to use L'Hopital's rule. All right, so we are going to continue um, on to number 10. So if you see here, we're plugging in infinity for all of the x's that we have in our problem, giving us ln one plus infinity uh, cubed over ln two plus infinity which is basically ln of infinity over ln of infinity, which is infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate. So we're using L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to um, first indicate that we're using L'Hopital's rule. And then I'm going to write the original problem. And then we're going to take the derivative of the top and take the derivative of the bottom. So we're going to get 3x squared over 1 plus x cubed for the top of our expression. That's the derivative of ln of 1 plus x cubed. We used the chain rule in this case, so make sure that you know how to properly use that and you use it correctly. Um, and that's why we get um, that's why we get 3x squared over 1 plus x cubed. For the bottom, we're going to get 1 over 2 plus x, and that's also another instance where we have to use the chain rule to get the correct derivative. And now we're going to simplify that expression by dividing, um, by dividing those two fractions. And dividing fractions is the same as multiplying, um, the top by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So basically we're gonna get three x squared times two plus x over x cubed plus one. Again, that's not taking the derivative or anything. I'm just simplifying the previous expression by um, dividing the two fractions. And I did that by multiplying the top fraction by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So our final limit is going to be 3x cubed plus 6x squared over x cubed plus 1. Now, you can do L'Hopital's rule again, since if you plugged in infinity, you would get infinity over infinity. But if you look at this fraction, um, you'll notice that it is the limit is same heavy and we talk about heaviness in our um, limits to infinity video but same heavy just means that there's the same um like x powers on both the top and the bottom so like we have x cubed on the top and x cubed on the bottom so um it's actually easier to solve this problem if you notice that the the um, limit that you find after doing one L'Hopital rule um, is same heavy. And since the limit is going to infinity and both parts of the fractions are, po are polynomials, um, we can just say that the limit is three 
based on the heaviness rules. If you're unfamiliar with heaviness, um, same heavy, top heavy, bottom heavy, again, look at the video about limits involving infinity. That will really help you out um, and give you a couple of shortcuts so you don't have to do any extra work. All right. So again, I'm just writing exactly what I said. Notice the limit is same heavy. Um, and noticing the limit is same heavy is easier than having to do L'Hopital again, um, which you can do if you um, didn't notice that it was same heavy. Um, you would still get the correct answer. It just might be a little bit difficult and it might be easier to make some mistakes. All right. Now we are going to go, oh, I already wrote it down. Um, but the next problem, as you can see, if we plug in zero, to the top and the bottom, we're gonna get negative infinity over zero. Um, and that is equal to negative infinity. So that's our answer. We don't have to do L'Hopital's rule and we can just move on to the next problem. Oh, okay. All right, let me finish that problem. And we're going to move on. All right, number 12, you'll notice that we have P's and Q's in this problem. Um, you can treat the P's and the Q's as just constants. But um, regardless, if you plug in zero for x, you're going to get tan of zero over tan of zero. And tan of zero is zero, so you'll have zero over zero. And that's an indeterminate, and that means that we have to do L'Hopital's rule. All right, so we're going to keep going. Um, I'm going to write that we're doing L'Hopital's rule, write the original problem. And then we're going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom. Since we're treating the p and the q as constants, we're going to have to do the chain rule for both the top and the bottom. So doing the chain rule for the top um, of this expression will give us um, secant squared uh, px times p over secant squared qx times q. So we just treat the p's and q's as if they were constants, um, actual numbers. So if you had like tan of 4x, you get secant squared um, 4x times 4. So it looks a little bit tricky, but it's honestly just um, very simple. Don't let that trip you up. So just a reminder, secant um, is equal to one over cosine and cosine of zero is equal to one. So secant of zero is equal to one as well. So as we plug in zero for all of the x's, we're going to get secant squared of zero, which is one times p over secant squared of zero, which is one times q. So our final answer will be p and p over q. And you can leave this answer in terms of p's and q's because um, we're treating those as constants in this problem. All right, number 13. We have um, the limit going to zero. So we're gonna have five to the zero minus three to the zero over zero. And remember that anything to the zero power is equal to one. So um, one minus one is zero. So we have an indeterminate, we have to use L'Hopital's rule. So to take the derivative of a number to um, any variable, let's say the number was a and the variable was x, we would get to take the, ver to take the derivative of a to the x, um, we would get a to the x ln a. So in terms of our problem, if we're taking the derivative of the top of the expression, 
we're going to have 5t ln 5, because t is our x in this case, our variable, and a is equal to 5 in this case. Um, that's our constant. And then we're also, we have, we also have 3 to the t, so we're also going to have 3 to the t ln 3. And then that's all over 1, because the derivative of t is just 1. All right, and that all is our limit, our new limit, and then we're going to plug in 0. So we have 5 to the 0 times ln 5 minus 3 to the 0 times ln 3. Again, any number to the 0 power is 1, so our final answer will be ln 5 minus ln 3. Moving on to number 14, you see that we have a's in the problem as well as x's. We're going to treat a as we did um, p and q in the previous problem, number 12. We're treating a as a constant. So treat it as you would any regular number. So plugging in 1, since the limit is going to 1 in this case, for every x that we see, we're going to get 1 to the a minus a times 1 plus a minus 1 over 1 minus 1 squared. And that will give us 0 over 0, an indeterminate, and that means that we use, you guessed it, L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to indicate that I'm using L'Hopital's rule. Then I'm going to write the original problem. Now I'm going to take the derivative of the top, um, which gives us ax to the a minus 1, that's just a power rule. It looks a little bit funky since we don't exactly know what a is. But again, we're treating a as a constant, um, which is why we are writing it as such. And then we subtract a from that. Um, we drop the plus a um, that you see in the original expression. You see that um, we have a minus 1. Obviously, we drop the 1 because it's a constant, um, the derivative of any constant is 0. And since we're also treating a like a constant, the derivative of a is going to be 0, so we don't need to write that also. Um, it's a little confusing, it's a little tricky, but just think of a as a constant. And then we're going to take the derivative of the bottom part, um, which gives us 2 um, times it should be x minus 1, but I believe I accidentally already replaced the x in that bottom part. Um, so the bottom part of the expression, if we were leaving it in terms of x, would be 2 times x minus 1. I accidentally went ahead and plugged in 1 since the limit is going to 1, so that's why it says 1 minus 1. But that first one should technically be an x right now. So if we plug in 1 um, to the top as well as the bottom, we're going to get 0 over 0 um, since x, um, since 1 to any power is 1, we're going to have a minus a on the top, which gives us 0. And then as you can see, I kind of already wrote it down, but 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 0, is 0. So we're going to have to do L'Hopital's rule again. All right, so I'm going to write the um, expression that we just found by taking the derivatives of the original limit. And then we're going to take the derivative of this new limit um, to do L'Hopital's rule again. So we're going to have for the top a times in parentheses a minus 1 times x to the a minus 2. That's another power rule. It looks a little more complicated since we're using a's instead of an actual number. So we can't technically um, combine any of the numbers. But again, treat a as a constant. Um, and just think of this as you would um, any other uh, instance where you have to take the power rule of 
an expression. And all of that is going over to, again, we're going to drop that minus a because the derivative of any constant is zero and the a in this case is a constant. So its derivative would be zero. And then we're going to put that all over two. And then to solve this problem, we're going to replace every x with a one. So we have a times a minus one times one to the a minus two over two. And since any number, any, it, since one to any power is one, on the top we have a times a minus one over two. And you can leave the answer um, in this form, since again, we're treating a's in this case as a constant. So your answer is okay to have a's in it. All right, last problem. Um, we have a limit going to infinity. So it's a little hard to see on the video um, because the previous problem kind of went over the top of this problem. But we have x over ln um, 1 plus 2e to the x. So putting in infinities for all of our x's, we're going to get infinity over ln of 1 plus 2e to the infinity, which gives us infinity over ln infinity, which gives us infinity over infinity. And that's an indeterminate again, so we're using L'Hopital's rule. Um, so I'm indicating, as usual, that I'm using L'Hopital's rule. And then I'm going to write the original problem as shown. And then I'm going to take the derivative of the top and take the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of x is just 1, very simple, and the derivative of the bottom is a little more complicated since we do have to use the chain rule in this case. So the derivative of the bottom is going to be 2e to the x over 1 plus 2e to the x. And now we're going to simplify that expression um, by dividing 1 by 2e to the x over 1 plus 2e to the x. And we divide fractions again by multiplying the top frac or the top by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So our simplified version of this limit will be 1 plus 2e to the x over 2e to the x. And if we plug in infinity for all the x's that we see, we're going to get infinity over infinity which means that we're going to have to do L'Hopital's rule again. So luckily I simplified this expression already, um, so I don't have to simplify it anymore. But if you didn't originally simplify this expression before plugging in infinity, I recommend you do so. So it's easier to do the second L'Hopital rule. So now we're going to um, do L'Hopital's rule on our new limit, 1 plus 2e to the x over 2e to the x. And basically, we're going to get um, 2e to the x over 2e to the x um, as our answer after taking the derivatives. So 2e to the x divided by 2e to the x is 1. And so the limit of x um, to infinity, if there's only a 1, is just 1. The answer is 1. So it's important that you kind of recognize that 2e to the x divided by 2e to the x is equal to 1. Because if you plug in infinity, then you're going to get infinity over infinity. Um, and you might get stuck doing L'Hopital forever, since you're just going to keep getting infinity over infinity. And you're keep going to um, you're going to keep getting two e to the x over two e to the x as the derivative of this limit. As long as you remember to simplify, you should be fine. Um, you should always simplify um, when you have to do multiple um, L'Hopital rules or before doing the derivative of the next L'Hopital. 
basically just simplify. It makes your life easier, um, makes things less complicated. So that's all for this video. Um, if you enjoyed this video, if it was at all helpful to you, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Um, limits are hard. And so we actually have a couple um, more videos uh, where we review limits um, and also review how to use L'Hopital, all of that good stuff. Um, it gets easier with practice for sure. So I really recommend checking out those videos if you find that you have any trouble with L'Hopital or limits in general. Thanks for watching.